see something on the screen while I'm talking about it. Thank you. Dahlia, let's wait to get to the cultural setting until we've gone through the physical and historical. Those are the easier ones. So talk to me about the physical setting. Physical setting of flowers for Algernon. What do you have? Come on, folks. It's one of those basic questions. Yeah. yeah. Laboratory. What else do you have? Where else are the factory, right, Luke? Yes, thank you, Luke. Laboratory, factory. What other environments do you have? I can think of at least two others. The school. His home, which seems to be some sort of apartment, right? Because he's renting a room. So we have a rented room, we have a school classroom, we have a laboratory, and we have a factory. So list all of those as physical settings. Good. Can somebody tell me what they all have in common? Uh, yes, they are all places. That is correct. I would like something more specific that they have in common. Shane? True. Although some people go, some people go for walks. No. That's correct. Which means TJ that he lives in what kind of environment all the time? You're getting to it, TJ. Like a work kind of industrial sort of environment. He's always in like a classroom, laboratory, factory setting, an industrial setting. All right, back on it. Um, they are all, and TJ's on the right track, there are all work kind of settings, industrial kind of settings, where you are sitting there and there's an authority figure over you. Classroom, laboratory, um, factory. Factory's got the boss. Laboratory's got the doctor. Classroom's got what? Teacher. He is always in this kind of environment. And when he's not, he's in some the boss in the rented house. Landlady, thank you very much. He's always in some kind of artificial, industrial, authority-based setting. Which makes him very much like what in the story? What's he constantly being compared to in the story? I'm sorry? Uh, true. So he doesn't really seem to be all that human, right? He seems to be an object. So once again, Jacob, take it another step further. What's he being compared to throughout the story? Garrett, if, if it just becomes a toy, I can just take it away. If you're not mature enough to use the technology, then you will lose the technology. Am I clear about that? Thank you. I'm sorry. What was that? Thank you, Luke. He's being compared to the mouse, right? And what's the mouse inside, Luke, throughout the story? Thank you. Charlie is involved in settings throughout the story that are very much like that mouse in that artificial maze. That's why the story never takes place outside because he's never allowed freedom. Historical setting, when does it take place? Uh, yes, but we actually have a journal entry that's dated. Natalie? Thank you very much. 1965 or is it 64? 65 or something like that. Okay, 65, good. 1965. The cultural setting, Dahlia, getting finally to an answer to your question, is basically what we're talking about with that, that the commonality of all those physical settings. We're always talking about a culture of authority over people. Hey, think about the difference here. There's a different sort of culture in this room right now 
than there is when you and your friends are gathering and hanging out. Different rules, different dynamics, different expectations. The story always exists in an authority-based culture. And we could go even further and talk about other issues. The fact that it takes place in the 60s during uh, post-war pre-digital environment. But I don't think we need to go there. I think it's important enough that we talk about this authority-based culture. He is a rat in a maze. And it's not accidental that there's a rat in the maze throughout the story. Does that help? Cool. We are nearing the end of our time. So if you have any last minute questions, ask them. Don't forget that you will, of course, be able to ask questions during tomorrow's writing assignment if you have them. And uh, if that's it, wrap up, log off, and turn in the Chromebooks.